We filmed our last video under the assumption that we were not buying a boat until the spring, and we just wanted to be transparent with you all that we were going to be looking because we wanted to take you all on that journey as we started to look as we were traveling up and down the East Coast. But, but. we bought a boat. <laughs> So in the last video, we made like a list of requirements and would be nices, right? Yeah. And in this video, we'll talk about how this boat stacks up against that list that we made. Let's go check it out. Meet Acadia, our new to us 1980 Tartan 37. She is 37 feet long, almost 12 feet wide, and weighs close to twice as much as our Alberg 30. The Tartan 37 was designed by Sparkman and Stevens and first built in 1976. It was an adaptation of the Tartan's 38-foot racing boats and made with cruising in mind. This particular Tartan has been converted to a cutter rig, which gives us many, many more options for sail configurations, which means greater comfort and higher winds and seas. Our first sail out was in 15 to 20 knots with a very comfortable heel angle. The motion of the boat was slow, and the following seas we experienced would have been pretty uncomfortable on Ecola, but we barely felt it on Acadia. One of the things that we really wanted on a bigger and new boat was room for guests so people could come and visit. On Acadia, we have a nice large V-berth up forward that we'll use as our quarters. Plus we have four additional berths that can be used for guests. So here in the salon, we have one, we have two, and this one is slid out right now, but it actually pushes in to make it easier to get by here. And then we also have a quarter berth in the back that converts to a double. Right now it is full of a lot of project stuff that we have going on, because we're gonna have to be doing a few things as we're underway, but that will eventually convert into a double berth for guests, which will be our primary guest quarters. I am super excited about the galley layout here on Acadia. It is significantly larger and the layout is fantastic. It has this little recess so that people can get by while you are cooking. We have a ton more cold storage. The fridge is almost twice as big. The freezer is twice as big as our angle. Plus we're bringing our angle with us as well. So we have so much freezer storage. All of this is food storage. And the best part about the galley is I now have an oven. This boat doesn't have a separate stall shower, but it does have a large enclosed head for showering in. And a six gallon hot water heater that's heated by both the engine and electricity, it's a big step up for us. The layout of this boat means that we won't be in each other's way nearly as often. We can go about our day without constantly having to inconvenience the other just to move about the boat. There is also enough room that each of us is able to bring more of our personal items on board. We have picked up about a 20% increase in speed while motoring and closer to 30% while sailing. This is huge. The trip from Annapolis to our slip here at the Y River would have taken us five hours at Ecola's top speeds, and we made it in a leisurely four. We're hoping this is a good sign for increased range. I'm already finding it significantly easier to get around here on Acadia. The big major pieces that have changed is one, I don't have to step up onto a bridge deck to get down the companionway, and the companionway is significantly less steep. It's less like a ladder, more like stairs. It's not quite stairs, but it's pretty close. The decks are also wider, and I have much, much better visibility from the helm, both standing and sitting. Andy also has an increase in visibility from the helm, which means it's just been an all-around good change for both of us. So why this boat after we've only seen a handful of boats since we started looking? There are three major reasons outside of the fact that it met almost all of our wish list. The first... This boat has a brand new Beta 38. Now if we learned anything about doing an engine swap in a Cola last winter was the amount of time it takes, the amount of extra cost that like run away above and beyond just the engine. 
And then like just the like pure discomfort. Emotional of, toll. An emotional toll of doing the job of being in a boatyard and having this already done, which is amazing. It's huge. And also it means that the previous owner had also taken the depreciation on this engine that we've taken on the engine we put in Ecola. The second reason is this boat is absolutely immaculate. You could eat out of the bilges. The bright work inside and out is absolutely gorgeous, which means that we're basically only maintaining and not playing catch up, which is huge for my mental health. Um, as much as I enjoy doing bright work, I was dreading the thought of starting with a boat that needed it from the ground up, which one of the boats that we looked at definitely needed that. Also, all of the soft goods are all in great shape. We, we are only going to need to replace the quarter berth cushions. They were just on the older side and they didn't smell bad, but they just were uncomfortable. So we're replacing that. But all of the salon cushions, the mattress and the V-berth, all of that is in great shape and will give us many more years of service. Also, it has a great suite of sails, including a brand new 140 Genoa, which we're not even sure has ever been flown. Like it is crispy. Crispy and like tightly folded. <laughs> yeah. Um, it has a, a jib that's a hundred, like a, a traditional jib that's in great shape. The stay sail's in great shape. Uh, the Jenniker is in, I would good, say, good, good shape. shape. The only thing that really needs replacing is the mainsail. It is very blown out, uh, and we will plan on replacing that in the next year. But for now, it is serviceable enough that we can head south with it. The last thing is all the typical tartan issues have been addressed. The soft decks around the chain plates, those have been all repaired. And the rudder water infiltration issue that these boats have, the rudder has just been rebuilt along with new rudder bearings. So like all the typical art tartan issues have been just recently taken care of in the last two years. And finally, a huge selling point for us was the fact that it was in a condition that we could sail it south this year. We had every intention of taking Ecola south, but the fact that we're able to do it in a bigger, more comfortable boat is huge. Now, obviously, so far, we've only had the boat for a couple of weeks, but we are super excited and happy with our purchase, and it has made life so much easier. In the next video, we're gonna show you what it took to get off the dock in two weeks time. We'll see you next time.